there are so many architectures and it takes so much processing to do it in real time. And so we created this thing called a tensor core. There are a whole bunch of them in our chip. And imagine this, okay? Imagine that a 1080 Ti is 12, 1080 Ti is what, 11, 11 teraflops. A full 1080 Ti, a full 1080 Ti at $699 is 11 teraflops. This is 110 teraflops. Basically, it would take a 10 full 1080 Ti's to keep up with the tensor core processor that's all over the Turing GPU. Now, one of the things that we taught it to do is something really incredible. And so we taught, we taught the neural network this thing, and we're calling it the NVIDIA DLSS, Deep Learning Super Sample. Basically, it works like this. We what are you going to run it on? What are you going to run all these amazing games on? Well, let's show it to you. Starting at 499. <laughs> Starting at 499. It wasn't $4.99, it was $11.99. And the reason Jensen told you it was worth paying over 50% more for a 2080 Ti versus what the 1080 Ti was is because you got tensor cores, you got RT cores. No, 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 that giant amount of die space being used up, that's not just for professional applications. It's for gamers too because of ray tracing and DLSS. And, well, let's be honest, at least at launch, that was a complete joke. Ray tracing was non-existent in its support, or at best, unusable in practical terms, and DLSS was worse than just running games at a lower resolution with TAA. However, things have changed in two years. Ray tracing is now okay in some games, and you can get decent frame rates at okay resolutions. Although... There are AMD graphics cards running really impressive ray tracing already with RDNA 2, and, well, even in the latest PC games, RDNA 2 is trading blows with Ampere. So, so I would actually argue that, to this day, tensor cores aren't provably more useful than a different gamer-focused design for ray tracing, but, well, a lot of people point to DLSS still, and, in fact, people like me have recently said that DLSS is going to be a big problem for AMD if it becomes ubiquitous before AMD has an answer. And DLSS isn't a joke anymore. It works well in some games and in more games than just a handful, and it's getting more and more support every day. But, yeah. FSR just came out, and I believe it ended the argument. Before I get into that analysis, though, and afterwards I will talk about what I believe NVIDIA's response is going to be, I do want to mention, though, something quickly. Watch the Hardware Unboxed and Gamers Nexus analysis of this, especially Hardware Unboxed. He does a fantastic job of really combing through specific questions he knew you would have as he was testing it. Tim did a fantastic job. But I will do my summary after looking at a half a dozen reviews of how I feel FSR stacks up to DLSS today. And the first thing to mention is that the highest quality FSR is roughly comparable to the highest quality DLSS, both in image quality and in the performance boost you get. Now look, technically, the highest quality DLSS mode in the best supported games does look a little better, but this is a far cry from the DLSS 1.0 launch. And FSR is supported on APUs, on NVIDIA and AMD GPUs, going back to apparently Maxwell. FSR is for everybody to get higher frame rates much more easily. And it gives you frame rates that are comparable to 1440p performance with better than 1440p image quality. It is better than upscaling unlike DLSS 1.0 at launch. No matter how you dice it, in fact, Hardware Unboxed found that you could not replicate the same quality as FSR in Adobe with intensive sharpening and upscaling techniques and touching it up for an hour. He took an hour after something was rendered to see if he could make it look as good as FSR. He could not. This is not a sharpening filter. And in fact, Linus Tech Tips even messed with an M cable, and I have one, and it did impress me a few years ago and found that that active cable solutions 
we're inferior to FSR as well. So if the first thing to bring up is that at launch, AMD is almost as good as the best DLSS implementation, so they're not technically as good. The second thing to bring up is that this is just not any sort of upscaling or sharpening filter in and of itself. This is clearly something special that cannot be replicated by any tech site I see trying to. Again, a far cry from what DLSS 1 was at launch. The fact that AMD was able to do this without any AI training and in a way far better than any other alternative right now tells you that NVIDIA simply prioritized professional applications and non-gaming customers with Turing and Ampere, and that the Tensor Cores and these features that are using them right now were shoehorned in to explain to gamers why they were taking up so much die space for non-traditional performance-boosting parts of the die. And that's about there, all there is to say about that part of it. Although, let's be clear... FSR isn't magic, just like DLSS 1.0 wasn't magic either. When you go to 1440p or certainly lower, it's recommended you use ultra mode. And in fact, in 1080p, it starts to look a little rough, just like trying to use DLSS in 1080p. Although again, Hardware Unboxed and Linus Tech Tips did seem to indicate that 1080p with FSR is better than dropping the resolution down to 720p. So it does give options to lower spec gamers. And in fact, with 720p and FSR, you can run games that just straight up a weak little laptop couldn't run before. And that's what's really also then important to emphasize here with FSR. You could argue FSR isn't really a DLSS competitor. It's not some expensive to train technique for expensive graphics cards to get a slight image quality boost and frame rate boost. It's a frame booster for everyone that aims for massive increases without introducing excessive dev work or latency issues. Latency issues that have stopped me from using DLSS in more than a few games. And by most counts, it takes hilariously little effort to implement FSR into a game. Supposedly hours for one dev at a studio is enough to get it working in a game. This is key to AMD's game plan then. It is not DLSS. It isn't a ubiquitous frame rate booster that's easy to implement, that isn't expensive. And that is key to making RDNA 3 a real winner next year. AMD wants to get FSR in everyone's hands, working on everything, so it is the gold standard, so that then RDNA 3 can launch with an enhanced version that better utilizes it than other architectures. But, honestly, although I was going to make a bigger point in this video that FSR isn't DLSS, the funny thing is that it works so well that I don't mind the comparisons to DLSS as much as I thought I would. And so, yeah, there it is. I mean, FSR is an incredible new tool for gamers and developers to increase their frame rates when necessary. But I do think AMD should have been more upfront that this isn't a direct DLSS competitor, to be clear. And in fact, I do still feel, even though I'm impressed, more impressed than I thought I would be by FSR, that AMD may be almost falling into a trap that NVIDIA is leaving to keep Mindshare after FSR's launch. Now, what trap is that? Well... Honestly, I think NVIDIA was legitimately caught off guard by FSR. I really don't think they expected AMD to have something ready in June with so few leaks ahead of time. And I don't think they expected AMD to literally support Pascal and Maxwell at launch. Scott definitely debated them again in that earlier interview this year. But I also believe NVIDIA is not scrambling right now for a reason. NVIDIA has to know that while FSR isn't stated to be a competitor by AMD, all websites will say it is. And they've been very upfront in a lot of the beginnings of the videos I've been talking about today that it is a DLSS competitor. They know that the press will treat FSR as a DLSS competitor, and they of course know that technically DLSS is going to win the image quality war. NVIDIA knew the press will give AMD credit for making a great frame booster, but they will also say NVIDIA has the best image quality, and NVIDIA can use FSR as well. So, while NVIDIA was caught off guard, and I legitimately think they were, I think they said, hey, let's get to work expanding DLSS faster than expected then and stay quiet. Let's just take the L for a month. After that, we can come back at them hard, 
And that's what I believe NVIDIA is doing. Letting AMD get the spotlight for a month. They, they won this round. Both good and bad, though, with the bad being emphasized by some websites that I actually just don't agree with. But then making it clear immediately that DLSS will be coming to many more games. And it's already supported on far more games than FSR. And so this idea that AMDs will be more ubiquitous is maybe going to fall on deaf ears. NVIDIA is going to say, well, they can say it's going to be easier to implement and be better supported, but right now ours is better supported, and we're bringing it to Linux, and look at these dozens of games that it's coming to soon. And in fact, I think that NVIDIA is only going to double these efforts now in terms of paying to have DLSS used. I've talked about many times recently that I think NVIDIA solution is just paying more money for devs to use DLSS. And thinking about it now, I think the reason they will very easily be willing to do this is simply because it's free advertising in every game that has DLSS. I mean, think about it. Every time if you're an AMD or Intel graphics card and you look in the menu and it shows DLSS and it's grayed out, that's an advertisement that you could buy NVIDIA. Sure, you can use FSR, but only NVIDIA cards get DLSS. And while we may have to pay to put it into games, guess what? Free NVIDIA, ab well, not free. They paid for it to put it in the game. You get NVIDIA advertising in every game that has DLSS. So let's just make sure every game we can gets it. And I think that's what NVIDIA is going to do. And it honestly reminds me of G-Sync. NVIDIA was first... And then AMD made something more consumer-friendly and well-supported, and everyone assumed G-Sync would be dead overnight. But NVIDIA doubled their efforts, and G-Sync lurched on for years as the go-to reference for adaptive sync. I think that's what NVIDIA is going to do with DLSS. You can already make comparisons, in fact, between G-Sync Premium and DLSS 2.2 about to be announced, saying ours is the better one and it's getting better, which is what I hear about DLSS 2.2. I know some people are messing with it and modding it into games, but when it's fully unveiled in the full version, I do hear that DLSS 2.2 increases image quality even further over DLSS 2.1. And you could have guessed that, but that's what NVIDIA is doing. They're expanding support now, making it clear they have more games supported now, that's coming to Linux, that's coming to more games, letting AMD take the spotlight a little bit for a month, and then announcing DLSS 2.2, just like they did announcing like how playing up how G-Sync is more premium than FreeSync and doubling their marketing efforts. It's a similar playbook that they're going to have, I believe, for DLSS versus FSR, which whether you think they're directly comparable or not, they're getting compared, so I'm not going to shy away from it any longer. And so that's it, honestly. Uh, that's what I think of FSR, and that's what I think NVIDIA's current planned response is. The final thing I'll say in the midterm is, I don't know how to feel about a question, if you were to ask me, has AMD or NVIDIA one overall the fact is saying an amd one is kind of incorrect fsr is not really a dlss competitor in my opinion even if it's so good it can be amd succeeded in launching a resolution frame booster that should become ubiquitous quickly if amd keeps at it but nvidia still has dlss exclusively for its products neither has one then if they aren't directly the same thing however amd has launched a killer feature that can be used by just about everybody soon. And it is forcing NVIDIA to make DLSS actually work well, unlike before, as I've demonstrated in reviews, and be better supported. So at the end of the day, long term, I'm not sure who's going to win this war. And short term, AMD definitely has a win today. But in the midterm, I think it's consumers that have won. And that's going to just about do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to like it, leave a comment, tell me what you think, and share this video that really does help so much. And of course, subscribe to the Moore's Laws Dead YouTube channel and ring the bell button so you don't miss upcoming videos and podcasts. A Broken Silicon will be coming out shortly where me and Dan discuss this further in addition to E3 stuff. And uh, yeah, if you have the extra money, consider supporting us on Patreon. Me, our audio engineer, Gerard, Dan, could use the money and it does make all of this keep working. It allows us to get cards and pay for shipping and stuff too test things that we just couldn't afford to do otherwise because we don't get sent anything by these companies. Uh, but anyways, that is all. Thank you for watching. <laughs>